and welcome to SU TV Live, where we'll be bringing you all of the build up ahead of our game this afternoon against Blackpool. Of course, we'll be wanting another three points just like last week. And this day, it started not quite, not quite so nice, a bit wet and miserable, but it's turned into a beautiful, uh, almost summer's day. It's a little bit frosty, so make sure you still bring your coats if you're coming down to Bravel Lane today. Uh, but a beautiful day up here in Sheffield. Um, and it's not just going to be me bringing you the build-up, fortunately. Uh, I'm joined by two former Sheffield United legends. Uh, first up, you already know who I'm going to say. It's uh, SUTV Live uh, regular and former Blaze defender, Kevin engage Kev how are you I'm absolutely fine thank you Ashley lovely oh, looking forward to another good game of football yeah uh, good as you, week as you say sun's out so it should be a good game sun's out guns out ready to go aren't we and uh, Kev we're also uh, reunited or at least I'm reunited uh, with former Blades striker Carla Sabo Carla it's been ages yeah, it's been great. Great. Been I away seen from you here. I've seen lots of other presenters who've been wonderful. <laughs> haven't believed me, so I've had a great time. <laughs> I don't quite know how to take that. I, I thought that we had a bond, but clearly that yeah, was very much one sided. Well, well wrong. Well wrong. <laughs> well, I was going to say, although I haven't seen you, I feel like I've been keeping up to date with your life because, uh, oh, of course, God. you're very um, active on your social media and your little lovely. If you haven't seen, uh, Carl's got a gorgeous Frenchie called Freddie. So it's almost like we were just saying before, it's like we're on the walks with you. Yeah, but you're both going to be blocked months <laughs> away from here. So let's get back to the game. Leave poor <laughs> Carl and Freddie alone. Carl's come out fighting today, hasn't he, Kev? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I just scroll past him these days. I, mean, I see him, but I don't read or, or listen to anything he does. Oh, 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 well, on that note... Um, uh, guys, we've got a big game today, haven't we? Like I, like I mentioned, we um, we haven't been on the field for seven days. Kev, that's almost unheard of that we've had a week in training. Uh, so, Lubisic Kukanovic, hopefully, going to be happy with uh, preparations this week. Yeah, and it's always nice to have a week's training after a, a decent a decent three points. You know, we've played better against Barnsley. <coughs> in this, we've played better this season. But as I say, good to get everybody back. No international breaks. Very few injuries as well, so everybody's coming back to fitness. A few bits and bobs, but nothing too major. And yeah, good to get a full week's uh, uh, work on the training pitch, which everybody will have enjoyed. Um, like you just mentioned, Barnsley last week. Um, it was a bit of a tense end to that game, but I guess a win's a win, and we're just looking for another one today. Yeah, progression. The team's progressing all the time. We're learning more about the boys. They're bonding. They're learning more about the managers wishes for them and he's, uh, he's learning more about their capability so it was a, a tense end to the game but there were so many positives to take from it just encouraged and the managers had another seven days to work with his squad so excited to see what, what we, we do today. Excited, definitely. Um, we're going to look back at what happened last week against Barnsley in just a moment. Uh, but Kev, right now is a good time for us to really be building momentum in the league and getting those back-to-back -back victories, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, there's not a lot in this league, is there? Yes, Bournemouth are running away with it a bit at the top there. Um, whether they continue to do so, we don't know, but they look a good team. But everybody else is kind of playing catch-up and, the, and the league's concertina together. So there's not a lot between even, even the bottom three, you know, and the, and the top three, or top six or whatever, not a lot of points in it. So any team that can put together a, a few runs, a few uh, wins and a run of victories is going to very quickly catapult up the league. We're looking at Blackpool today. They've done similar to what we've just talked about there. And also Forest, who we play, uh, for, I think it's Tuesday, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they've, they've put a run of victories together. And all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're mid-table and pushing for the top six. So it's up to us to push on now. It is very close uh, in the league table. And like you just said, uh, mid, the middle of the table is kind of overcrowded. Um, Blackpool, they have had a good start to the season as well, Carl. Um, what are your thoughts on them? Is It's going to be a test for us? This is going to be a tough match, um, especially with the return in Medine. He's a very good player. He's going to be up for this. And um, with some of our defensive frailties, I think he'll fancy his chances. But I, I still feel we're one of the best teams in the division, if not the best. I think Fulham are the only team I've seen who, who really, really stand out. But uh, we lost to Bournemouth and we were far, far better than them. So I think that even gave us confidence. That loss was like, well, we actually beat them. So I think the boys walked off disappointed, but uh, sort of with a belief that we're better. 
Yeah, I, th I think Cole's right there. But also, with the team we played today, Blackpool, beat Fulham, haven't they? So I think that just shows that everybody in this division can beat everybody else. I don't think that, that although Bournemouth are seem to be running away at the top, uh, but they've had an exceptional run of form. But I, I do think it's such a strong division. It's all much of a muchness, and there's no reason why Sheffield United, you know, can't can't gradually progress up the league and and get and get the victories and get the points on the board. And we have been in great form recently as well, haven't we, Kev? Yeah, well, we've, we've been a lot better. We seem to be getting progressively better through the yeah. season, definitely. Everybody knows about the problems we had at the start of the season, just couldn't get anything together. But our performance, I keep saying this every week, don't I? But I genuinely do believe it. Our performances have been really quite good. We've, we've had odd patches in games where we haven't been up to standard. But I think generally, we, you know, we've, been, we've been quite impressive and I do believe we're getting there. Um, we just mentioned Blackpool's results. Let's just take a look at the last few games that they've had. Um, yeah, they're not doing too badly. <laughs> I think they've only lost one in seven games. That was against Forest. Really impressive. So it's going to be a test, isn't it? Real tough test. Um, impressive run. They have a lot of belief. And they also know that we're indifferent at the moment. We're, we're playing good, but we're not getting um, all the results we, we deserve. So they'll be coming here thinking if they can silence the crowd and, and get the crowd to turn. They'll fancy their chances. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a job silencing the Sheffield United fans. Hopefully, hopefully they'll get behind us. <clears throat> I think Blackpool has still got the uh, the promotion bounce, if you like. You know, yeah. they come up last season, so the club's on a bit of a high, and they've been in the doldrums for, I was going to say, decades. They've been a long time down there, haven't they? They had a, a fleeting glimpse of the Premiership, but then they've been really in the doldrums as a club. So I think the fans are getting behind them because they've had a little bit of success and, and it's, a, it's a good football town, isn't it? It's definitely going to be an exciting fixture right here at Bramwell Lane. It's going to be a good one for the fans who are making their way down here today. Um, now, let's take a look at the team news. It did break just before we came on air. Just uh, We'll take a look at Sheffield United, um, how they line up ahead of the fixture this afternoon. Uh, one change there, uh, McBurney drops the bench uh, Morgan gives white comes back from a one game ban. Um, Carl, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I feel feel a little bit for um, Bernie because I thought he was really good. He, he played really well um, against Barnsley. He won all these headers, and him and Moose were a handful. They, they work well together. But for me, Gibbs White's been our standout player this season, so I did expect him to come back in. And you know, that's what we need. We need the competition. That, okay, you've got to come in and perform, and then you're you know you stand a chance. And Moose. Moose has got it, retained his place, and now we just we got subs chomping at a bit to get in the team. Yeah, I agree with that. For me, at the moment, out of all the players we have available, that is without a doubt our strongest side that we could possibly put out. You could make a case for Billy Sharp. You know, would have come in earlier in the season for Moose because Billy Sharp was doing fantastically well up front on his own, basically. But I think Moose, a fully fit Moose, would get in over Sharp every day of the week. So for me, that's the, the, the ideal Sheffield United side all round. Well, we'll have to see, won't we, how the game pans out. But we will take another look at the team news in just a short while. But right now, let's turn our attention to seven days ago where we faced Barnsley at Oakwell. Here are the highlights. And now they do get this dive match underway. It's Barnsley against the Blades. Live here on SUTV. Bernie coming deep, turns it round the corner for Njaye, who's onside here, Moussa in front of him, Osborne joining as well at the back post. Here's Illiman Njaye, in goes the cross, Moussa didn't get the connection he wanted. Certainly the best chance of the game so far from a Sheffield United perspective. Gavin Ward, the referee, blows his whistle and Sheffield United get this second half underway here at Oakwell. Adebayejo does well, Egan comes across, Adebayejo with the cross, not the best of clearances, and not a great connection. Now Norwood just slipped there, but he might retrieve it. He does. Baldock, ball up with a strike, takes a deflection. And United have to settle for a corner. Moose over the break here. Moose with a strike. Wonderful from Lise Moose. The Frenchman with his second goal of the season in front of the Sheffield United supporters. It's Sheffield United who have the first blood in this South Yorkshire derby. Barnsley nil, Blades one. The game really needed that and Sheffield United on the front foot again with Ben Osborne. Osborne's cross and it's in again. And it's that man again, Lise Moussey. Two in a couple of minutes. 
the blades all of a sudden two in front and in full control here at Oakwell Barnsley nil Sheffield United two out to the right hand side McBurney will keep it in play Mousse in the penalty area so is Ben Osborne McBurney looking for Mousse couldn't quite get the connection that he needed he's going to have a dip I think here Woodrow decent strike never really threatening Robin Olsen's goal into the penalty area might come here for Jasper Moon hits the post and that could have certainly changed the flow of the game McGoldrick gives it back to Baldock eventually Sharps in the box cut back for Osborne real chance here to finish it Osborne surely that's game set a match to Sheffield United now Ben Osborne's third of the season Osborne takes the touch drills it in and with 72 minutes on the clock it's Barnsley nil Sheffield United three Styles. Low cross from Styles. Cole might get onto this. It's a great finish by Devante Cole. Barnsley, well, maybe there's a ray of light at the end of the tunnel. They've got a lot of work to do. 77 gone. Barnsley won. Sheffield United three. On the mark. Seca. Seca still going. That's going to be careful here. And Seca has smashed it into the net. And it's game on now at Oakwell. Barnsley right back into this game. Eight minutes remaining, Barnsley two, Sheffield United three. The keeper's up, and it goes from Woodrow. The keeper was there. It's glance wide. There is the full-time whistle. It's finished, Barnsley two, Sheffield United three. Well, what a game that ended out to be. Uh, both of you involved last week. Carl, you were commentating, and Kev, you, you were, of course, on SETV Live. Um, definitely a game of two halves. Um, if you, if you didn't, well, I guess those highlights say it, say it as um, the fact that there's only one clip from the first half, just to prove that there was a first half, basically. <laughs> um, Kev, what were your thoughts last week? <coughs> well, firstly, that, as we've already spoken about, fantastic to just scrape through at the end. And yeah. yeah, you're right, it's the classic cliche game of two halves. And for the neutral, you know, it was a bore fest the first half. We had one shot of goal, I think, Moussa, and that was it. Both, both sides, you know, just feeling each other out. And then we just kind of burst into life second half and it was, it was a fantastic game of football. Not just because of the goals we scored, but we had other opportunities to score as well and breakaways a couple of times. But those last, I mean, those last eight minutes and then six minutes of injury time, I don't know where that all came from, but we were really, really hanging on for dear life. And in the end, it was an absolute fantastic relief to just get through it and, and come away with all three points. Because at one stage, you know, with about three, four minutes to go, I genuinely thought we were going to concede again. I think, yeah, when you find out you've got six minutes injury time, everyone starts to just hold on to their seat and start rocking. But, Carl, what happened? Like, what happens at half time for five goals? To be well, scored obviously, in the second I think half. the manager just asked for more from the players and they gave it to him. But for me, it was the substitutions. Uh, I feel it really affected the game massively. The conditions, you know, you can't pick up on it on the TV, but the, it was really gusty and we, were, we had the win. So it was going to hold up and help their attackers second half to have more of the ball. But, oh, I was, I was in and I was co-commentating with a Barnsley forward. And he was getting <laughs> chirpy and I was getting agitated and it was getting a bit heated in the, in the stand. So um, it, it was difficult, difficult to watch. You know, the Blades fans went through all the emotions. They're laughing at the Barnsley fans at 3-0 and thinking, here comes four. The substitutions changed and the whole dynamic of the game, we were no longer stretching them and we brought them onto us. And at the moment in time, confidence in our defence isn't, you know, they're not part. You know, they're not married together. And... We just need to help the defence out. As a team, we've got to defend. Because at the moment, the back four and the keeper are not the most solid. So I just felt that the substitutions weren't, weren't the best for us. But it's easy for me to say I'm watching it. You know, I, I don't know what the players' conditions are like and, and stuff on the bench. So it was just a tough one. It was a tough one. And like many of us, 3-0, um, I think it was 72 minutes into the game, uh, Kev. You, to be fair, you and Matt thought... 
done and dusted. The job's done. I think you might have jinxed it for us. <laughs> yeah, it, it was the you know, game set of matches, Matt said in commentary. And we're ready to pack up and go home with a 3-0 victory. But, you know, I, I've been banging on about it all week because everybody's been moaning about our defence and this, that and the other. But Barnsley, it's a local derby and Barnsley are 3-0 down at home. Of course they're going to have a go. You know, of course they're going to throw the kitchen sink at us. They bought a couple of attacking subs on. You know, Carl's exactly right. We didn't have any, any, uh, anybody in our team in, on the subs bench who could run the other way. So, so Billy, bless him, is not going to make those long you know, runs forward and get on the end of our, any break, potential breakaways. So we were kind of camped in our own half. And then we didn't keep possession of the ball well enough. When we got the ball, we just kept giving it away. And that brought more Barnsley attacks forward. So in the end, although we, you know, it wasn't a fantastic de- defensive performance and we let in two goals. But for the last five, ten minutes, you know, we actually did get bodies in the way and got blocks in. And, and uh, as, as hairy, scary as it was, we got the job done. I mean, as fans as well, um, when a team pull one back, it's kind of an uncomfortable place to be. Um, when you guys were playing, do you remember those moments and what was going through your head? Well, I, I've, I've been in lots of um, sweet seesaw ones. Um, and as the team that's losing, once you get a goal, and bear in mind, Devante Cole missed an open goal that he could never miss again at nil-nil. So we, we had um, a scare already. It's, it's just, it, you do get shaky and when you feel the fans' nervousness transmits to the field and you, t- you, know, you kick a ball out panicked, which you would normally take a touch, and the moment they scored, you know, we're all looking about, thinking, oh God, this is going to be a long time. And it really did drag out. And I was, I was fearful that we were going to drop another two points. But we got the three points. The boys have won a match. And now, you know, they scored another three goals away from home. We're a really a, a exciting team going forward. Well, like you say, Carl, three points. A win is a win. We don't mind how we get there. As long as we get those wins, it would be nice to be a little bit more clinical, wouldn't it, Kev? But at the end of the day, the points, it's that that matters. Yeah, I think it, uh, the manager has, has got a track record of, of creating... Um, or moulding, you know, creative, fast-flowing, attacking football teams. So we, we're certainly seeing that in the way this Fitch Chef United side is developing. And, and Saturday, last Saturday was a, was a point in case. You know, we scored three fantastically, really well-worked goals, by the way. Brilliant finish, obviously, from Moussa. That's all about individual ability. But the other two goals, brilliant. Got down the byline, cool, calm, collected, you know, cross and clinical finishing. So it, the football going forward is a real joy to watch at times. And we've got people like Njai coming on to that. We haven't even spoke about him. We haven't spoke about him yet. And he's been brilliant for us all season. And again on Saturday. Um, so we're, we're really, really good going forward. If we, we do need to tighten up just a bit at the back, which is what Sheffield United side, you know, used to be all about, being strong and solid at the back. So we do need, we do need to improve. But the, the, as I said earlier, the signs are there. We're developing into a good all-round team. Uh, you just mentioned the manager there. I think it's time we hear um, his post-match interview. This is Slavisha Jokanovic after the game. You took Musse and Njai off in the second half. You then brought Basham on late on when you had Brewster on the bench. Could you have kept it a bit more attacking on the field of play and, and kept going for it a little bit more? Because when you lost that pace up front, you seemed to invite Barnsley on a little bit more. No, I am completely not agree with this. We are where they score, uh, we stay with uh, without uh, we, we change the shape. Where they score uh, second, we are uh, where we score the, the third. We are uh, start to thinking about use uh, Ryan Brewster in the in the in the game, but uh, two quick uh, goals bring us in 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 the trouble for the for a try finish of the game like where we are uh, where we are in this uh, in this uh, moment. Uh, I didn't uh, send any order for uh, for uh, defend result and finish a 3 nil is uh, our idea is uh, keep going we try start to find a lot of the space we are not not uh, score all the chances what we make it in the today but uh, for another side uh, I can complain about we are clinical or we are not clinical but we score three goals and three goals must be enough that should you feel that should have been enough today, essentially, to be three 0 up but away from home at a team that was struggling. Listen, uh, it's for another side, is uh, our work is win the game. Our work is uh, is uh, is uh, 
he scored the goals, but uh, our work is uh, started uh, not consider the goals. Where they are talking about uh, the goals, goal, I am not talking about defensive line. I am talking about all the team. I am not talking about keeper. I am not talking about one player and another player. So we must to interpret and understand uh, better what happened during one uh, one game and where we are in the travel. We must to survive with the personality, with the quality, with the with the with the power. But today we are showing enough uh, power. But these, uh, these first two things uh, I miss uh, a little bit. Great to hear from the man in the hot seat as always. It looked like a very sunny day there as well. I think it's a bit of the sun in his eyes, getting a tan. I'm sure he loved that. Um, Carl, your thoughts on what he had to say after the match? Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot easier sitting in the stands and talking retrospectively of, of a manager's decisions. Um, of course, he wasn't trying to shut up shop and he wanted more goals. I just felt when you've got uh, the pace affecting the team uh, as much as it did for us you try and replicate that so the subs if you're playing like for like you bring on a striker that's got pace if you're taking off a striker with pace and you've got our record sign in there I felt if Brewster was on he'd continue to stretch them and take them away from our goal basically um, but as I say it's easy to say after the, the event just with Didzy coming on and Billy Sharp coming on great players who score goals and great but, but they're not going to stretch the, the, the game out and take pressure off our, our defence. So, you know, I just think it was one of those days that it could have worked. He could have scored the fourth. It didn't, and it brought on pressure. And he'll know that himself now for next time. If we need to string a game out, he'll maybe, you know, choose a different sub. Kev, do you agree with that? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Because if you, if you, if you bring in on McGoldrick, McGoldrick especially, because he will get hold of the ball, and Billy Sharp, you know, and they, they can both get hold of the ball, keep the ball, and bring other people into play. But as I said you know, two minutes ago, we just didn't keep possession of the ball. Norwood was giving it away, Fleck was giving it, everybody was giving it away. So consequently, we just inviting pressure, pressure all the time. Of course, one of the substitutions, uh, Moussa coming off, was forced because he had a bit of a calf problem. Um, so you can understand you know, why we had to make changes because yeah. in an ideal world, 3-0 up, you'd just keep going, wouldn't you? Yeah. You wouldn't make any subs at all. Um, I just wonder whether sometimes it could have been maybe a, if, it, when we're getting bombarded by Barnsley, maybe a, def, a, a proper defensive sub, you know, maybe bringing Basham on in midfield or something like that to shore up midfield. We eventually brought Basham on to go centre-half and play with three centre-halves. But, you know, it was 3-2 at that stage. We were, we were desperate just trying anything. Just holding on for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> Momentum return then as well. Yeah. It's difficult. For, I think if you put a defender on and it's your choice, you're in control of it, it has a different effect. If you would have, when we brought Brasham on, it was like it was bringing us back and it was like, OK, we've really got a problem here. So I think when you introduce a defender, it, it, the timing has a big effect as well. Um, indeed. And another point that um, Slavisha Kanovic made was the fact that the fact they conceded two goals um, is the responsibility of the entire team on the field, not just the goalkeeper and the defensive players. Carl, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, of course. You see it in the Premier League week in, week out now. The high press, it starts up with the strikers and it makes it hard for your teams to get out and attack you. And again, what I don't think many people have understood from Saturday was Moussa and... Um, McBurney were closing down and they were working so hard at uh, uh, pressing as well as in Jai and Osborne um, and again that's with the, the people you have it, filling the spaces with Billy you've got to keep Billy central for goals because he can't be scooting out everywhere he hasn't got the legs for it and it takes away from his game so those substitutes that change the defending from the front as well but you know, I, I just think Moussa and, and McBurney, they worked really hard and, and that's what you need from strikers. They, they know how to defend from the front. Um, and you mentioned uh, Ben Osborne there. He's having a really good season. In fact, um, SUTV Live did catch up with him earlier this week. Uh, let's take a look at what he had to say. Huge start to the second half, really. Like I said, there wasn't too much in the first half. It felt like it needed a team to take it by the scruff of the neck, and, and you did. And what can you say about Lees and the, the, the two goals he scored? Yeah, I mean, um, I think one, I spun it down the channel, um, knew that he'd be running, and he, he got hold of it, cut inside and scored. So he's done unbelievable for that one. And it's exactly what we needed, to be honest. Then it opened up, and we started cutting through him. And... Um, yeah, the goals came in pretty quick succession after we had a 15 minute spell where we were at our best and looked really dangerous again um, so but yeah no credit to him um, it's getting the two goals and uh, it was amazing in front of the away fans 
I mean, just how dangerous could he be, can he be, when he's in that kind of mood, he looks frightening, but he, he just not quite got it out of him enough. Yeah, I think everyone knows that. I think everyone's seen glimpses at the club. Um, I think it's just a case of, of being clever. I said to him at half-time, just be a little bit clever with your movement, you know, because when you're running off them, like, they can't live with you. Um, but if he does it every time, then he can get a little bit tired and less effective. But, um, yeah, magic for his, his first goal, and he was in a great position for the second. So you claiming a bit of credit then, with a bit of uh, some words of wisdom? A, claim, <laughs> oh, yeah, claiming that and claim, claiming two assists, even though the first one was all moose, really. Are you also pleased with the goal as well? I mean, good cutback from, from George, yeah. you managed to, to get yourself a yard. That's a third yeah. for the season. Uh, yeah, I was in a couple of good positions um, throughout the game, but... Yeah, great ball from George. I think they were expecting him to whip it across and he's found a little gap. And um, yeah, had to score really. So first touch one great, but managed to slip it in. And uh, like I said, it was a clash in front of the away fans. In a, in a more advanced forward position, are you conscious now that everybody needs to kind of chip in with, with more goals and really help out? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think we've been a bit too reliant on Sharpie uh, this season. Um, so it was nice to to help out a little bit more and I think you know I could feel that they've been coming in games and like chances and assists and, and goals and it was nice to get a couple more today and just finally taking on from this now I suppose it's a case of just trying to get that consistency over over 90 minutes because you're showing it really well in spells yeah that's it I think um, we'll work hard on the training pitch this week and I'm sure Gaffer will address that and um, yeah that's got to be the next focus for us Ben Osborne there speaking to SUTV Live. Um, he's having such a good season. It's, and last week he was great. Two assists, Kev, and a goal. Um, what did you make of his performance? Well, he's missed the consistency, isn't he? You, you know what you're getting from Ben Osborne. You know, it's going to be seven, seven and a half out of ten. He rarely dips below seven. Sometimes he's eight, eight and a half, you know, with his assists and his goals. So you need players like that in and around your squad and your team. And the best compliment I could perhaps pay him is that not many Blades fans at the start of the season would have had Ben Osborne as, as a regular starter this season. You know, he was a kind of a bit part player and he has been for a couple of seasons since he joined. But, you know, you have to pick him at the moment because he, you just, he's just get, you know, as I say, you know what you're getting from him. He gets crosses in. He's up and down that left-hand side. He's got a lovely left foot. He's got quality on the ball. So, yeah, he's, you have to play him at the moment. He's just doing great. I mean, we just saw his stats there as well, Carl. Um, and he's got a great relationship with um, Lise Mousset, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, he's, he's having a good season. And he, he is. Uh, there's a lot on social media where the, the Blades fans are seeing him as like the first name on the sheet. But for me, it's his work rate. He's, he's just he's in, so enthusiastic that some of the players around him, you know, they have to, they have to match his work rate because he, he gives everything some of his deliveries been just incredible you know he the go the the ball in from set second or you know you see him looking up and it's an inch perfect pass and he's been he's been a credit to himself and his co people who've coached him this season he's been really bang on i think what was nice as well um in the interview he did say you know i'm going to take a little bit of credit because i gave him a good team talk at half time well, <laughs> he's an experienced player you know he's 27 years old he, he looks like he's 18 19 doesn't he mm. but he's been in and around the team been in and around forest team for years and years so he's played quite a few you know 100 games and that's absolutely right if he feels he can improve Lise Mousset's game, but you know, by a little bit of pep talk. I mean, they, me and Carl know it goes on all the time at half time. You know, you're going to try and help somebody in with their game, whichever they, however you can. And obviously, uh, Ben knows all about Lise Mousset. He sees him in training, so he, he's just trying to help him along and just trying to give him a little bit of confidence. But Carl's right. His, his deliveries this season have been quite superb. He, he seems to be making better decisions on when to clip those balls in and when to put put them in low. You know, he, he's not wasting any crosses when he gets into good into good areas. So I've been hugely impressed with him. And uh, yeah, he's he's turning into a real mainstay in the side now. I also think um, being able to have conversations like that in the dressing room it just shows how cohesive they are as a side and how much they trust each other and their opinion. Carl. Yeah, they have a respect for each other. I think that's. That's the key thing in this, that they know what each other can do. And if you see one of your teammates not performing to their level, you can tell them in the right way. You're not having a go at them. You're just telling them, look, you're better than this. And that, when someone, one of your peers says that to you, you take it as a, you know, come on, I really have to. But a big compliment for him is that 
you've got Brewster, our record signer, sat on the bench, and the easiest thing for a manager to do would be to shuffle them and die over to the left, bring Brewster on, appease the, you know, the, the financial people. And, but no, Osborne has is, is made a claim on merit. You know, he, he is a, a key p- person in this team. And with the ball, when we get players faced up, the passing and the movement that these guys do, and, and Osborne's a key member of this, is just exciting to watch. And, you know, I'm looking forward to watching them now. Yeah, you know, he's not the type of player, is he, who's going to beat two men in a, in a mazy dribble. He kind of gets it and he gives it and there's little give and goes and he's in the right area and he'll pass a little ball through. But it's so a good he, pass, isn't it? Oh, it's, yeah. He, he always, yeah. It's not just to get it away from you. It's, he respects the, the abilities of the person he's passing to and his passing is always bang on. Um, and, of course, it wasn't just him uh, who was highlighted last week. How good was Mousse? Well, he's, he's fabulous. As I sort of said, we've been saying all season, you know, a fit Lise Mousset could be the key to us finishing mid-table or really getting up into that top six and possibly, possibly auto-promotion. Um, Not bad stats there got, either. He's, he's got so much ability in, yeah. and in snippets, he is literally unplayable. Yeah. As the Premiership found out two years ago when he's running rings around Man United and some of the top defenders in the world scoring at Everton, etc., etc. As I say that, it comes on screen. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and we know he's got the ability. That's never been in doubt. We've got to find some way, or he's got to find some way, of keeping himself fit. Yeah. That's the key thing with Lise Mousset. So, I mean, he, he, you saw that stat come up. I think he's, he started 18 games for us out of 50 appearances. He's been bought off every time, you know, obviously with an in- injury, mo- mainly because he rarely has a, a terrible game that he needs to be dragged off. But we need more consistency out of him. We need him to be either 100% fit or as fit as he possibly can, can get, as close to 100 as possible. He is turning out to be a really key player for us. And those stats, nine goals in 15 games. Not bad, is it, Carl? That's incre- not bad. That's incredible. <laughs> um, what made me happy on, on um, Sunday against Bar- Barnsley was his work rate in the first half. It wasn't all smooth passing, but he made it so uncomfortable for the Barnsley defenders. He was turning bad balls into good balls, and he was anything that couldn't be ours, he was making it so Barnsley couldn't have good ball, couldn't have good possession. Um, and his fitness is, is the concern because you don't believe his shape at the moment is able to last 90 minutes. The way he wants to work, he has to be in a better condition to last 90 minutes, but his actual quality on the ball and his finishing, it's just, you know, no wonder the Blaze fans love him. He, he is of a different level to the championship. He, he's a standout player. We've got some really exciting players and we're very much looking forward to watching them out there this afternoon. Um, now, we did have a look at Sheffield United's team, but let's take another look um, at both sides and how they line up, starting with the visitors. So, of course, we face Blackpool at 3 p.m. Uh, that's only 25 minutes away, and this is how they line up. Um, Kev, who, sh- who um, takes your fancy? Who, sh- who sticks out? None of them take my fancy, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Um, well, there's a couple of names that obviously we know quite well. Gary Medine, the washing machine himself, who had a controversial uh, stay in Sheffield, playing yeah. for both clubs, of course switched sides and we were all ready to hate him as Sheffield United fans but he actually did quite well for us <laughs> he actually fulfilled his brief you know he's I mean he's a big lad he's a big physical strong boy six foot three six foot four puts himself about gives defenders a torrid time um, and did really quite well for us in, in his few appearances he he made for us and uh, helped us along the way to that promotion yeah um, so he's going to be tough for our defenders they at least you know with Medine what you're getting so Egan and Davis will know they, they, they've been in a, in a battle this afternoon. Um, Richard Keogh as well at the back. I can't know more, more about him. He'll tell you in a minute. But I think we can cause him real problems. He's 35 years old, experienced defender. He'll, be, he'll need all that experience as, against the pace and the power of Moussa and also the trickery of Njai if he gets up against him. And I think in, Njai, Gibbs White, if they get one-on-one with Keogh, I think they could cause him real problems. Yeah, the same. I, I pick out Medine as well. I think Medine would flourish in this team at the moment for, for the Blades. You know, he, he's a proper unit. He's an honest, strong, hard-working player. Um, and he's going you know, to make us earn a clean sheet today. Um, and Keogh, 
he, he used to be my apprentice at, at Stoke. He's a rash. He's a lovely, honest lad, apart from, you know, off the field events. Um, <laughs> but on, on the field, he's a, he's a great player. He's international. He's proven. Um, I think Moose can really trouble him. You know, he loves to dive in and playing against Moose, I think you, you don't actually understand how quick he is. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if Keogh gets booked early diving in because he'll like to smash him. Um, but then it's up to Moose to, to overcome that. And, and I believe he will. But they're a good team all round. They're, they're a good, solid team. You don't win the last the six out of the last seven in the last seven that, that they have if you're, a, if you're an average team. They're a good team. And this is going to be a massive test for us. But we've got the crowds. They're going to be here. They're following from a free, a free goal um, victory. It's going to be a great atmosphere. I'm really excited for this. Like you say, they are a good team. Uh, but of course, we do have the 12th man. Um, let's take a look again at how we line up today. Sheffield United. Here we go. So we've had one change, as we mentioned. Um, Ollie McBurney drops the bench and Morgan Gibbs-White comes on. Um, of course, coming back from a one-game uh, ban. Um, what are your thoughts, Kev? Uh, well, as I said earlier, it's, it's the team. It's our full-strength side, I, I believe. It's a 4-4-2 formation, which is not the preferred uh, formation that the manager wants to play. Mm. Yeah, I think it's, it's well documented he wants a 4-3-3 formation there's not an awful lot in it to be fair people talk about tactics and formations when you're out on the pitch you just play you know wherever you are wherever you find yourself on the pitch a lot of the time um, so we've definitely got the flat, flat back four and then it's just uh, we've got we've also got fluidity with Njai floating about we've already spoke about Osborne he will drift inside as well Gibbs White great to see him back we, we Although we won the game at Barnsley, we did miss his quality because you do. He's just a, a top quality player, as he's proved. So he'll be looking to make amends for his, uh, for his Millwall. Uh, his problems he had at Millwall were too silly booking. So he'll want to he'll make amends for that. Um, yeah, I, I don't see any problems this afternoon. I, I genuinely think we can, if, if we play anything like we have done, I think we will be too good for Blackpool. Too good for Blackpool, do you agree, Carl? If the players play as they can, I think Gibbs White for me, is, I've, I've enjoyed watching him. I love my kids coming to watch him because he's exciting. Now with Moose, Njai and Osbot, we've got such an attacking, you know, flair. I think there could be another spanking coming soon for another team. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to be Blackpool, but the way we're, we're going to click again soon and if we score five or six, I'll not be surprised. The players won't be surprised. Kev won't be surprised because they're that good going forward. I just today I'd like a nice settled performance solid performance and you know just just a, an honest straightforward victory because it's going to be hard and you don't want to give these guys any hint of a chance we don't we definitely don't want to do that Gibbs White yes a very exciting player and like you just mentioned Illiman and Jai uh, is also really exciting to watch and uh, fortunately for me I got to catch up with him uh, earlier on this afternoon and this is what he had to say Thanks so much for joining us, Illiman. Um, it's almost unheard of that you guys get seven days in training, but that has happened. It's been a week since you've been out on the field. Um, how pre preparations been this week? Uh, it's been good. Uh, you know, after the three points on Barnsley, we were just training and, um, you know, trying to carry on the, you know, have a winning streak and, yeah. Um, and Blackpool, they're only a few points ahead of us in the league table. Um, so it's going to be quite a test today. How do you think you're going to break down a side like them? Uh, you know, mo most of the games are quite tough. Um, but, you know, we've, we've trained and, uh, you know, we're, ju we're just going to have to turn up and, you know, be uh, hungry to, you know, get the three points. And of course, you're playing up front with Lise Mousset, who you've got a really great relationship with. How much are you looking forward to that? Uh, I've been uh, waiting to play with him, you know. I uh, played with him at Barnsley and we did, uh, I think we did quite well together. So hopefully we'll be able to carry on and do uh, great things again today. And we're expecting a huge crowd today. So it's going to be really great to be back here at Bramall Lane in front of the fans, isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's a, it's a boost for us, you know, especially uh, even more today, 30,000. So looking forward to it. Lovely stuff. Thank you so much for joining us and best of luck today. Thank you very much. 
Illiman enjoy there. Very much got his head in the game, Kev. Yes, certainly has, doesn't he? He's a very, very exciting player, isn't he? Uh, great to watch on the pitch. Uh, much better to watch on the pitch than to interview, maybe. <laughs> doesn't say an awful lot, does he? But he doesn't need to because he lets his skill talk, you know, talk for him on the pitch. And he's a young lad making his way in the game. Had a fantastic start to his Sheffield United career and his Football League career. And uh, if he continues in the, same, in the same way and at the same rate of progress, you can see him being a really top player, maybe, you know, high championship, even premiership, you know, whether it be with Sheffield United, great, but, you know, I can see him getting a move somewhere in future years. Is that good? Like you say, a uh, man of very few words, but very impressive on the field, Carl. Yeah, he's great before, uh, you know, on the field. Um, you did well to get an interview off him before a match. You know, I wouldn't speak to anyone before a match, to, you know, I'd be focused and for a young lad to be able to do that and be comfortable to do it because that adds a little pressure to you as well. Um, it speaks volumes. I thought on Saturday away at Barnsley he was, he was taking control of that position. He was playing wide right at the start and he's shouting around to his other experienced co teammates what to do and I just thought, you know, I was blown away by him. Well, it's great to hear that he's making his mark on the field. Um, another player that we managed to catch up with uh, this week is um, former Blackpool uh, player and also current Blades midfielder, it's John Fleck. Yeah, it was, it was good. Um, it was good to get in, in around some games uh, at that time, at, at that stage of my career, where I was trying to sort of find myself as a player, if you like. And what position would suit my best, things like that, and get just a different experience. And thankfully, going down there, I had someone and someone I played with at Rangers, Barry Ferguson, who was already there, so it made it a little bit easier for me. So, how kind of formative was it then to learn from somebody like that um, in in learning your craft and learning your trade? Yeah, it was great. Obviously, at that at that point in the time, it was just fantastic to to know someone going moving away from home for the first time at that point. So, so yeah, just to have that, that sort of comfort around about me was, was a massive help. And it's an extraordinary division, isn't it? The fact that you're only a couple of points off the playoffs. There's five or six teams on 21. It might only take a couple of weekends and things will look a lot better. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If you, if you can go to two or three games with, with good results, you, you'll be there or thereabouts for the playoffs. And, and right now, that's our aim. Obviously, with the weekend coming up, um, I think Blackpool, I've not actually looked at the table, but the round about that sort of area as well, so it makes it a, good, a big occasion for us. And what about you? How, how are you assessing your own kind of contribution right now? Uh, a bit of a mixed a mixed bag, to be honest. Uh, the main thing for me personally is always going out and working my hardest and trying my best. That comes first for me personally. Um, obviously, I'd like to think, hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll play a bit better on the ball, if I can, and try and get back to... To, to be in that player again but uh, as I say the change, it's been a change for everyone and, and I'm, I'm sh still learning on job as well. John Fleck speaking to SUTV live there. Um, it's always exciting playing against a former team isn't it Kev? It is yeah but I, I, I'm not sure he's going to count seven games on loan to Blackpool as like a major you know former team in his career to be fair. He's probably forgotten all about it to be honest. But uh, we need to start to see the real John Fleck, don't we? You know, he's, we know he's set his own standards at this club. He's been so good for us in the past five seasons. You know, he's been brilliant, been a driving force in midfield, and he hasn't quite hit those levels this season consistently. Yes, he scored a couple of goals. You know, he's got his, he had the games. He's, 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 he has dominated in patches, but we need the consistency that we expect from John Fleck. So uh, I think he'd be the first one to admit that as well. Oh, I think he did. He just admitted it right there in that interview. He, is, he puts a, a lot of pressure on himself, but he knows the standard that he wants to be playing at. Yeah, he's, he's a very, very good player. Um, and for me, when he's driving forward and breaking the lines, there's very few players as good as him in the championship. It's just, he's got to start recapturing the form consistently, consistently now, because a lot of Blades fans are actually wondering, well, have we seen the last of that consistent form? And I personally don't think so. I think he's still got a good few years playing at the top level, but we need to see the performances now because the, that is the one position now we, we need to cement a bit stronger, the centre midfield. And I hope he's going to be part of it because his dynamicism going forward can be great for us. Um, and he did mention as well how um, 
it's a really strange league in the fact that you can just win one game and you can be up, the, you can jump up the table, can't you? And that's exactly what we need to be doing. Yeah, we spoke about it earlier in the show, didn't we? Yeah, it's very, very tight in there, and that you know, and everybody can beat everybody else. But to just pick up what Carl said, he's exactly right. We need we need the John Fleck of old, you know, driving forward into in, in that left midfield spot playing the balls through, clipping the balls in, helping the front players out. We don't want him coming back to the centre-halves, picking the ball off the centre-halves and, and trying to dictate play there. Norwood can do that and some others. You will need John Fleck getting on the ball a bit higher up the pitch where he's much more effective. Well, thanks for your thoughts, guys. Um, it's now time to turn our attention to a very important matter. Uh, this month, of course, is Black History Month. And earlier in the week, we caught up with Rian Brewster to get his thoughts on what this month means to him. Um, please also note that there is some, um, uh, some language in this uh, interview which you might find offensive, but please bear in mind the whole context of the full interview. Um, this is Rian Brewster. You know, it's different because I'm, I'm young, so, like, um, obviously I still have people I look up to and, you know, for people to look up to me, I know that there are people that do and um, I try to be the best role model I can and, like, on and off the pitch and, you know, um, it's mad to think that, you know, youngsters do look up to me, but, um, like I said, yeah, I try my best to, you know, do, do what I can on the pitch but also off the pitch because, you know, a lot of you know young young fans watch what I do, and if I'm doing something bad, they might think that they can do it, or um, and which is obviously not. So um, I try to be the best role model off the pitch as I can now by you know working hard, being good outside of football, and you know also in football. You know, obviously, if you look at the um, history and the hip the history of it and stuff like that is, is quite bad and you know obviously I would say it's changed quite a bit but there's still now there's still a lot still going on in the world that obviously we probably don't even know about that's happening in obviously other countries and probably this country as well um, and you asked me do I think it's changed during the pandemic obviously with you know the knee uh, before games and stuff like that and yeah it's changed a little bit but not really like there's still stuff that's happening now in the everyday world and in football and obviously we can try to help it as much as possible because we got a, a platform to do so but um yeah in the everyday life you know it, it still happens this it happens to me and obviously you know sometimes i'm young i have a nice car and you know stuff stuff happens and you know i don't want to go into too much detail about that but you know, you just think that, like, yeah, it still happens in everyday life and it's, you can't escape it. And what do I want to happen about it? I've already said in many of the interviews what I want to happen about it. I want to see, obviously in football, I want to see bands happening and stuff like that. But also in day to day life, I just want like more education on it, even to the older generation people, because sometimes they don't know. And if they're still feeding it to their children or youngsters, then it's just going to keep going on. So it might have to start in the older generation and work its way down. I think it was happening the same anyway, but it's just more shed light on it because there was no fun. So you probably hear it in the stadium, maybe, but and then like you would get a text or whatever after the game and you think nothing of it, but because um, you're, you're more likely to see it now because, or before, because there was no fun. So you didn't really like, because you heard it already, maybe in the stadium or whatever, um, you've kind of calmed down by the time you get to your phone and you just can't be bothered. But I think the fact that you didn't hear it in the stadium or whatever, and then you get to your phone and you just, all you see is, I don't know, monkey emojis or banana emojis or black this, nigga that, you, um, you probably add a frustration, you see it on your phone and then now you want to report it and stuff like that. Um, that's what I think, you know, because during the time you're on a pitch, you don't really think of that, especially when there's no fans. But and then obviously when you get off the phone and say you lost and whatever, because that's when they do it, basically when you lose or you play bad. And, you know, that's why I think it was more shed to light during the pandemic uh, when everyone was obviously off um, 
they have and it's like they have more times on that bleh, more time on their hands so they can make a fake account quicker they can say what they want they can delete it that account or whatever whatever and obviously now you can get that IP address and you know find out exactly who it was or what device it's from so now it's a bit better but it's still gonna happen and you just gotta try and make it as minimal as possible. Rian Brewster there speaking exclusively to SUTV Live. Um, he also sits on the Kick It Out advisory board, um, so it's great to, for him to offer his thoughts for Black History Month. Um, Kev, um, it's great to hear um, from him, and it is one of those uh, topics which is prominent inside and outside of football. Um, but, but what did you make of that? Um, I was quite impressed, actually. Yeah. He spoke quite well, didn't he? Very he did, impressed. yeah. yeah for, for a young lad. Uh, you can kind of feel the passion in his, in his what, what he's talking about. You know, it means a lot to him, as it, as it does the rest of the lads involved, yeah. Uh, and Carl? Yeah, it's a very different world to what we play football in. Uh, the social media side wasn't around when I played it. You had forums and the, the viciousness in some of the emails and messages on forums was tough but it was contained. Nowadays, what, what the players are, are involved in with just aimless people on Twitter and Instagram, it, it's very tough, but you know, they, they've got to focus on their job. And you know, if, they, if that has a big impact on you, you've got to isolate, you don't be looking. I know if it's there, it's hard not to. It's, um, it's just a very difficult world and it's a very difficult subject. And I just, it's great that there's so many people trying to, to make a difference. Definitely, um, and like you just mentioned there, social media, even when I, to be honest, even when I was younger, we just didn't have Twitter. And now everyone can be whoever they want to be, they can be <coughs> anonymous, and they're often not accountable. Um, and that's really um, disheartening, and obviously that needs to change. I am so glad social media wasn't a thing <laughs> when I was playing. Yeah. Not sure, I think my career would have been finished about 21. But yeah, different, different era, different world, isn't it? Yeah, and, and players these days have to adapt to the environment they, they you know, live and work in. Uh, I, gen I genuinely think, you know, I'm on Twitter a lot just because I have a very boring life, <laughs> but uh, I genuinely think if I was a footballer these days, I, I would come off social media. It's just not worth the aggravation, to be honest. I imagine um, it can be quite draining as well. When you think you're putting in a good performance, then people are, um, are coming at you on, on social media. But aside from that, you know, um, and regardless of skin colour, he also mentioned um, the responsibility of being a role model, both inside the world of football and, and outside. Um, and he's only 21. That's a huge responsibility, I think, for a 21-year-old to have on his shoulders. Well, it's huge awareness. Um, when I was 21, well, I wasn't even a, a footballer at that time. Um, but you, I wasn't aware of my role in the world and the impact that my actions had on, on other people. Um, I was really obsessed with Ian Wright and I, he impacted me. But vice versa, when I was playing, I didn't immediately think, well, if I do this, some young child could pick up on it. So the fact that he's well aware of, of his standing is, is great and speaks volumes of the lad. Yeah, it's great to be um, that self-aware indeed, um, especially from a, a young lad like Rian Brewster. Um, now, I think guys, it's great to get your, get your comments on that, but it's time to hear from the man in the hot seat ahead of our fixture today against Blackpool. This is Slavisha Jokanovic. We are talking about really offensive players, Saeed Limana, use in this position number 10 striker this is the number 10 strikers is uh, i try use it uh, the players and they are collaborate all of them in the in the football but it's one time more it's uh, uh, it's come back about uh, this uh, this situation it's not uh, it's not special it's a big uh, problem for uh, for me in the in this uh, in this uh, striker side uh, i mean this i have a lot of the option if something is not working i can i can try with another guy with enough uh, guaranteed with enough guaranteed but it's uh, some some uh, some some position is uh, is really a little bit complicated for us uh, find it uh, find it uh, same solution like uh, it's like what we believe is our first uh, first, uh, first solution for the for the game anyway is uh, Liz Musset uh, now complete, not complete, but he's participated in the last three games. He, he participated in two. 
He's, uh, he made a really good job for the, in both uh, both game for the, for us and uh, I hope he can be in the able from the improve his uh, fitness and and, uh, and be more times available for uh, for be in uh, in competitive squad. So Blackpool then is the is the next challenge. Just just a couple of points ahead of Sheffield United in the table. What what's your assessment of them right now? It's a really hard opponent. Opponent. Uh, I watch a lot of the games. They have some system, some uh, way how they play the football with lot of the lot of the intensity. They will uh, press us. Lot of the lot of the energy. They are brave. They play good football, and it's. Uh, it's, uh, I try uh, share this uh, important uh, important information with my uh, my team and try try prepare the team for be ready for the for the challenge. Slav predicting a difficult day at the office. Um, as you can see, Bramall Lane really filling up here. The teams are coming out. Um, great atmosphere. Carl, final thoughts from you. Prediction. I'm hoping two one for us. Um, just a solid performance. Maybe three one. Maybe 3-1. Well, and Kev has, of course, uh, gone off to join Matt Young in commentary. Uh, but I'm pretty sure his prediction was 3-1, uh, but you didn't hear that from me. Um, we will be with you at half-time. Over to commentary. After South Yorkshire Derby's success last weekend, the door is open for Sheffield United to close the three-point gap on the Championship playoff places. As the middle of the division starts to bunch up, this afternoon's opponents Blackpool are also...